What's going on, guys? This is John here with the Fantasy Tap. Welcome in for another great episode of our Listener League review. Today, we're going to be going over what happened in our Listener League in week five. Before we get started, though, make sure you guys are liking and subscribed to the YouTube channel, as well as hitting that bell icon to make sure you're not missing any videos, as well as getting all the notifications to let you know when we're live and when we're releasing more content for you guys. As well, don't forget about our Discord. The link for that will be in the description below. So let's jump on into this. Starting off the week, going over week four, looking at our man Miles, looking at our man Redbirds 2K21. Let's see how it ha what happened there. Uh, Miles did lose 100 to 107, keeping it close, falling from two and one down to two and two. Redbirds going up to three and one, moving his way up the league. Uh, what really worked out here for, for Redbird here seems to be the fact that his running back, Austin Eckler, had a great day, as well as playing Devonta Smith. Um, and what really hurt here for Miles is just the fact that Peyton Barber had absolutely no work this week. Uh, DJ Moore was able to almost carry it in, but just looking like he just had a lot of underperformances from other players on his team. Not a lot to save him there, but what really stands out is the fact that he really does not have much else on his bench. If he had played J.D. McKissick over Pey Peyton Barber this week, that would have been a win, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. Let's get over to one of my favorite games of the week so far. We actually have Cops and Rogers going up against TK Brad Hinton. And Wilson27, congratulations, bro. You got your first win of the season, and not only did you get your first win, but you dominated the week. So congratulations there. Had an amazing day playing Aaron Rodgers, Jonathan Taylor, playing the start of the week, Cordell Patterson, as well as Dawson Knox and Debo Samuel. The man just had everyone you wanted to have starting this week. It really stinks for Brad because he would have won a lot of the other matchups had he been playing almost anyone else in the league. He did have a very solid day with Matthew Stafford, uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire did a lot. Alvin Kamara's floor of 12 points will always get you by somehow. Uh, only really not getting a lot of work out of George Kittle this week, but still not enough to overcome the 50 point deficit that in which he lost and then didn't really have enough on the bench to make up there either. Uh, it's looking though, like he might be a little weak uh, at that at that wide receiver grouping uh, playing Royce Freeman in, oh, I'm sorry, he's, that's his bench. Moving on to the next people. Uh, I'm sorry. That means Wilson will be continuing at one and three going forward, and Brad Hinton's batting 500 at two and two currently in the season. Uh, moving on to the next game, we got Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers fan club going up against Team PNW. Uh, PNW taking his third win of the season coming into the league or coming into the week at two and one. Aaron Rodgers fan club did not bounce back coming in at one and two leaving at one and three uh and what really really hurt him here is the fact that the minnesota vikings offense just did not perform kirk cousins really taking a hit there only 13 points when you lose by 16 all it would have taken there was a halfway decent day from kirk and maybe a halfway decent day from deandre swift we're gonna give the chalk there to dalvin cook coming into the week a little bit late uh wasn't really expecting a lot from him and you didn't get it now, PNW did have an amazing stack playing uh, – I'm sorry, it did have an amazing lineup this week playing Russell Wilson, Ezekiel Elliott, and then getting those touchdowns from James Robinson as well as the only relevant Vikings player this week, Justin Jefferson. So very, very great day for him. Uh, looking at their benches, though, I don't really see a lot of depth for either of these teams, so they might want to continue to play the waivers. It does look like he does have A.J. Brown on the bench, so that was a smart play last week. We'll have to see if he can bounce back next week. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, 1-3, looking for that 2-3 and three next week. Um, and what was an absolute blowout? We had Cam Newton's burner phone started off the year uh, very, very hot and has just disintegrated, giving KBKC79 his first win of the season. Congratulations, KBKC. We no longer have any undefeated nor winless teams in the league, so we're keeping it pretty balanced. Uh, what happened here for Cam Newton's burner phone is he got the Justin Herbert play. That was, that was a great one. Uh, what really stunk it up for him, though, is both of his running backs combined for less than four points. Kenyon Drake only getting one carry, and then Chris Carson just be barely being used. Keenan Allen underperformed. Julio Jones didn't even perform. Juju Smith-Schuster wasn't even there. TJ Hawkinson 
tight end 15 on the week. And then Marvin Jones, again, nothing. He only scored 51 points this week. It is not looking good right now. He is in need of Christian McCaffrey, who is sitting happily on his bench right now. And as soon as he comes back, could be in for a much better season. Uh, KVKC only had to score 94 points and got walked away with the lead uh very happy for him there congratulations on your first win of the season he does have a lot of depth on his bench having sam darnold sitting there and we might even have something coming from flash gordon here uh this week going into kansas city so we're going to look forward to him possibly moving up into that two and three as well uh moving on to the next one team suck it easy continuing the dominant drive of just demolishing players this was an absolute shootout as far as fantasy goes the banana stand putting up 127 points against his 134 from team suck it easy uh, both quarterbacks had a solid day Patrick Mahomes absolutely lighting it up Derrick Henry in his 150 yard game plus his t- plus his one touchdown obviously going to do a lot for you but barely outscoring Najee Harris keeping it still close at this point uh, Trey Sermon did not outscore Joe Mixon. It's okay. Both of them had moderate days. But what really, really helped him out here was the fact that both of their defenses balled out. Uh, Banana Stan coming in with the Bills defense, who put up 24 points on the week, but still with that 14-point extras, David Montgomery's two-touchdown game adds a lot to to, um, suck it easy over here. So you're really going to have to look for Team Suck It Easy to just continue to dominate. I mean, the roster is looking absolutely spectacular. He does have some depth on his bench that he's not touching yet. Brandon Ayuk could be looking for a little bit of a bounce back. Uh, And then as well, we've got uh, Banana Stand here looking at A.J. Dillon, possibly with some Aaron Jones bang-up issues. And then Javon Williams could also be coming back in a bounce-back week next week. Look for both of these teams to continue to compete as Banana Stand only lost due to the great matchup he played against. And then currently the lead leaguer playing up against the what was the number two team in the league, uh, Frothy Pigskins and Team D. Segrist. What a matchup. D- team D. Segrist obviously got that Cowboy logo there, so we know he's playing Dak Prescott this week, last week. Really hurt him, though, was the fact that Josh Jacobs has been uh, nearly irrelevant this year. Um, Did not have anyone to take over that spot. Possibly Zach Moss, but you weren't going to be putting that in uh, before the week started. Uh, Nick Chubb had a meh day. Amari Cooper performed to expectations, did not really ball out. But the problem is he was going up against Tyreek Hill in his three-touchdown, 186-yard game. And anytime you have a receiver put up 40 points against you, it really, really hurts. Team Frothy Pigskins was the one that did the zero RB strategy and has already found some replacements there. He does have Leonard Fournette and Devin Singletary either drafted late or picked up off the waivers. And then Kyler Murray obviously balling out for him uh, with guys like Noah Fant helping round it out. Had our guy Segrist played no one else, he had no chance of winning it was just a domination congratulations team frothy pigskins and just look at this guy's bench he's got marquise brown in here who's been a top 12 wide receiver on the year he's got brandon cooks in here who's gonna have some huge games depending on the matchups and continuing in with these receivers cd lamb tyreek hill cooper cup it's just way too much to have to fight against it's going to be hard for teams to beat him and we might see him continue to dominate as we move forward toward our grand prize of this signed kyler murray helmet so let's run down the rankings really quick like i said frothy pigskins is the absolute winner or leader in the league right now putting up 545 points so far uh team suck it easy coming in as a solid number two followed by redbirds uh all three of these teams i believe are three and one as well as pnw 360 uh moving on to the two and two teams we've got the banana stand team tk brad hinton miles 707 and d segrist all of you guys well within a win of catching up and being a top four a top four team and then we've got the bottom of the barrel the one in three teams who are all very hopefuls all of their teams looking pretty solid especially wilson who just led the league in points this week uh coming in at one and three and leading the bottom group cops and rogers so wilson continue to get those wins in and you will absolutely see yourself shooting up very very quickly moving into those playoff spots on to number 10 we got aaron frogers fan club only putting up 394 points this league this season so far 
foot putting or fighting against 518. So he's really had a rough time so far. Uh, number 11, we got Cam Newton's burner phone. Again, a team that's been having some struggles with Christian McCaffrey out. And then Team KBKC took some shots in the draft and is a – fun player likes to take his own shots doesn't follow what all the other people are saying and sometimes it works out for him like it did this week so congratulations guys on everyone that won everyone who lost make sure you hit those waivers uh actually let's check out on that so we did have a trade happen in the league this week and it was wilson and pnw 360 swapping t higgins for damian harris with straight up um, I'm going to say I like the T Higgins part of that, especially if he comes back healthy this week and Joe Burrow continues to be a monster. Uh, then we also had some players hit the trade block. Logan Thomas and Calvin Ridley, either some guys are starting to lose their faith in him or they're just trying to sell him at the high that everyone else has expectations of a bounce back for both of them. Uh, going on to the waivers of the week, 58 week podcast picked up Damian Williams in a very, very heavy bidding war. We've got 85% of the fab budget spent on just Damian Williams, someone that might only be coming in for a handful of weeks. But if you need that running back, that is someone you want to make sure you grabbed because he's looking at possibly 20 carries coming into this week. LaVisca Chenault was picked up dropping Derek Carr, Wilson 27, making those moves at the skills position. Miles picking up Ganeth Gainwell and dropping Sony Michelle, apparently not liking what's happening with that number two running back for the Rams after that negative game. And then Fantasy Tab Groupie is continuing the stream defense is picking up the Dallas Cowboys going up against the Giants this week. And surprisingly, there was more than one bid on this. Wilson bidding a dollar, trying to make something happen there, not expecting anyone to pay up for it. But congratulations on that pickup there, Frothy Pigskins. And then obviously we got Oreo Boreal dropping the Bengals defense, picking up the Steelers this week as they're going to be going up against Denver, looking for Drew Locke to throw some interceptions and possibly some fumbles. And then we got Miles picking up Brandon Bolden, dropping Peyton Barber after that one carry game. Uh, going to have to say I agree with that pick up there, that pick up there. Uh, and hopefully he does a little bit better than Barber did for you. And then we got – Oreo Boreal grabbing the tight end. Dalton Schultz, one of the guys that Mike has as a streaming option for you that he's very fond of, as well as someone he's trying to trade for because of the fact that he is looking to be a very consistent tight end, as well as getting those touchdown targets. And then we got KBKC coming in with two picks here. We got Jamison Crowder picked up with no one to drop, as well as picking up Johnny Smith and dropping Pat Fryermuth. I'm going to have to see how that works out for you, bud. That is an interesting mood, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. And then finally, we got Van Jefferson being picked up by Miles, dropping J.J. Taylor. Again, looking for that running back in New England who is going to be the one that can put in some points for him. So make sure you guys are staying tuned and interested in this league. We do have some great matchups next week. Cops and Rogers going to be getting a matchup against Team Miles, looking for that second win. We got Team TK Bride Hinton going up against Redbirds 2K21. And then Aaron Rodgers Fan Club going up, up against KBKC, the battle of the one and threes. We're going to have to have someone leave this with two, win, two wins. Wow. <laughs> uh, one of the final ones, we got Cam Newton's burner phone going up against Team PNW360. So this is a big statement game for Newton's burner phone. We might have to see him put up a lot of points going up against Team P PNW360. Uh, he's going to be someone that has been putting up a lot of points every week. Look to have have to put up possibly 120 to 130 this week, Cam Newton's burner phone. Team D Seagrist is going up against Team Suck It Easy. Another statement game, Seagrist having a couple bad losses in a row, going up against a team that's been absolutely dominating. With their rosters, though, I do think that either team has a very good chance of, of winning this one. We've got Dak Prescott going up against Burrow. We've got Derrick Henry and Joe Mixon versus Nick Chubb and Josh Jacobs. Uh, and then a very healthy stack of wide receivers with Amari Cooper, Stephon Diggs, Cortland Sutton up against Adam Thielen, Tyler Lockett, and Tyler Boyd. And then Mike Williams – coming in as the flex position. I think Seagrass might have this, um, unless for some reason we see a repeat of last year when DK Metcalf got shut down by Jalen Ramsey and Tyler Lockett was the only available option for Russell Wilson and Tyler Lockett just balled out and balled out. And then finally, <clears throat> on, team, on to week six. 
last game of the week, we got the Banana Stand versus Team Frothy Pigskins. Again, this is going to be a, another great shootout game. What I like the most about this one is the fact that he's got Tyree Kill in, or Frothy Pigskin has Tyree Kill, while Banana Stand has Patrick Mahomes. That means anytime Patrick Mahomes is throwing a touchdown, there's like a 40% chance it's going to Tyree Kill. Pigskins is going to be eating the most of those points, which is great way to hedge your bets there. Uh, so I'm actually going to be giving my tip of the cap to Frothy Pigskins in this matchup, looking for him to go to four and one. And I'm really excited for this week. All right. So guys, make sure you guys are, like I said, subscribe to the YouTube channel, liking the videos as you're watching them. Comment in the section below. Let us know what else you guys want to see, what kind of stuff you'd like to hear about this league and which teams you guys are rooting for as we move into week five. I'm really excited because we're getting towards that trade deadline and we're going to start seeing some teams start making some big moves, changing up those rosters, trying to confirm that they get into the playoffs this year. Make sure to hit that Discord button or make sure to hit that Discord link invite where you can join a place for plenty of fantasy football aficionados, players, people, friends, family. It's just a big old family in general. We love each other in there and we'd love to have you join us. Make sure to hit that link. It'll be in the description as well as the podcast description. Uh, thank you guys again for joining us and make sure to tune in for next week's episode. We go over what